Okay guys, what we're going to do in this lesson is take a look at three little ideas. They're all kind of neat and they're all show you the power of C sharp. The first idea is going to be scroll bars where you slide the slider back and forth and it can change a number in a text box. The second idea is menus, making it look professional like, you know, these are menus in C sharp and we're going to make them for our particular program. The third idea is a little bit different. What that idea is where you have a form and maybe you have a button on it and then when you press it it goes to another form so you might have like a main menu and then the second menu is where you actually play your game or do your your actual uh, mathematics or calculations for your program okay so let's start off and learn how to use what's called a scroll bar and there's two kinds they both work exactly the same way one's called a, a horizontal scroll bar that's the one I'm going to press right now and make a little line right there okay so this is the basic look of a horizontal scroll bar. Horizontal scroll bars are always named HSB and then whatever. I'm going to call it test. Okay. And there's a couple of properties you can fool around with scroll bars. The ones that I'm going to set, let's say I want my scroll bar numbers to start at 10 and they're going to go to a thousand. And I'm going to make this large change go up by one, which means when I slide the slider, you're just going to have it change by one. Okay, so that's the first thing. So there's your scroll bar, the horizontal scroll bar, and it's, it's ready to go. Just going to do a save all. I always like to do that. Make sure you, you find a spot somewhere on your computer that you want to save it. If you're doing it at home like I am, you can put a spot on your C drive or the temp drive or whatever. And once I've picked that, I'm going to press save, and now we're ready to go. Just, if I, just for fun, I'm going to run it right now. And here it is. And it slides. A big deal like where are the actual numbers showing up well they're not right now so what we have to do next is we have to make a text box so we're going to slide down pick a text box we'll put the text box right there okay text boxes always start off with the name txt and then whatever and again i'll call it test and what i'm going to do now is program it so that as i slide the slider a number is going to show up there all right, so you double click on the scroll bar, you enter the underground, the coding uh, world, and what you do is you say, okay, uh, the text box is called text test dot text, and we want to feed it what the horizontal scroll bar has, which is called test. Now, at any moment in time, where you are in the scroll bar is a value. Okay, now you're looking at that, and I'm seeing red, which I don't like. And when I text test, so first of all, okay, found a mistake. My text box is called test. Very nice. Hopefully that fixes it. Oh, another problem. What is going on? Well, what's this now? Cannot explicitly, implicitly convert int to string. Well, what's happening is when I feed the text box the number of the slider, it's a number. But this is a text box. So somehow I've got to take this number and put quotes on it. So the way you do that is you use this command to string and watch. Now the red goes away and we're ready to test it out. Okay, so what happens now is I slide the slider. So you notice, let me go back to the beginning again. It starts at 10 like it was supposed to. And as I slide the slider, the number's changing. I can make it slide faster, all right, so that eventually it goes to 1,000. Okay, so that's the first type of thing that you can do uh, with the scroll bar. Okay, the next idea that I'm going to show you, I'm just going to do it right on top of here. I know it's going to get a little bit messy, but yeah, you'll get the idea. The next idea is to make like a professional menu. So there is like a menu control, uh, and I think it's called menu bar or something like that, or that menu strip. There it is. Okay, so you press it once. And you can drop it anywhere you want. It's not going to land where you think you're, you're going to put it. So like, even though you think you put it there, what happens is part of it shows up here, part of it's down here. Okay? Don't touch this thing down here. This is the part we're going to work with. So how about I have a color menu? All right? So it actually is going to have the word color. And then underneath it, I'm going to make up some colors. Like maybe I'll have a red color. Uh, let's do orange, if I spelled it right and let's do green and what I'm gonna do eventually and I'll show you right now by running it doesn't do anything yet but it, you can see it working see how you get all the choices isn't that cool 
when I press red, what I want it to do is make the whole screen red or green or blue or whatever I decide. Now, can you have more than one menu? Sure you can. You can press here and have some other stuff there. Okay, I don't know what you want, you'd want to do there. Maybe you'd have like a help menu and you'd have a bunch of different things pop up when you press on the help menu. Okay, I'm not going to do that today, but just again to show you, now you got two menus. Now you got a color menu that has a sub menu and then you just got this one. When you press it, there's nothing else there. Okay, let's do some coding like we always do. So when you press color, let's press on the red, double click. You enter the red coding area, right? And this is how you do background colors on uh, C Sharp. You say the word this, kind of like what's in front of you. Back color is a special word, then you go equals, and you type color. Now I think that's the American spelling. You know how I spelled it with the U? That's how they spell it in the States. And then you press dot. And when you press dot, there's like a million colors that pop up, right? There's some weird ones I've never seen before, like steel blue or slate gray or something. Now, if I just want the generic red, I can just type in the word red, semicolon. Okay, so that one's done. Let's do orange. I think there's an orange. We'll find out in a second. Equals color dot and orange. Oh, oh, where are you? Is there an orange? Yes, there is. There's even orange red. Okay, semicolon. Almost done this one. And then green, for sure there's green. This dot back color equals color dot green. Okay, testing time. So slide the slider, that's no big deal there. We know that works for sure. But let's try these colors now. Red. Hey, this background went red. Orange and green. Okay, so that's kind of cool. And that's another example of these little controls that are going to be part of your program to do all kinds of neat things from games to math to everything in between. The last thing I want to show you is the trickiest. Imagine that the screen we're on right now is like the main screen that you see at the beginning when you start the program. But it's just like, hello, how you doing? It's the welcome screen. And then you press a button and you go to another screen. Now, how do you do that? Well, first thing, let's put a button on here. Okay, and this is the button that's going to say go to the other screen. So we'll call this, and buttons are always BTN, go to. All right, now that's not enough. It'd be nice for the person to know what they have to do here. So we'll say uh, click here for a second screen. All right, and there it is. Okay, now you can't really code anything yet because there's no second screen. So here's kind of like the new stuff now. The second screen is a, what we call actually a form. So what you do is see where the title is up here? Mine was called Scroll Bars and Menus. So whatever you called your program, you right click on it, Add, and you're going to see this Add New Item on your menu. Okay, and when you press it, you got all these different choices, right? And the one that we want is the one that says Windows Form. Now, we're going to rub out that word there, and I'm going to call my second form, Form 2, okay? Just an obvious name. You could call it anything you want, obviously. And you press Add. Now, in a couple of seconds, there's going to be another form, Form 2. Hey, where did the other one go? Look over here. If you click this, you're back to your main menu. If you click Form 2, you're on your new one. Let's go back to the main one. All right, so now... The weirdest kind of programming, and at this stage, we've been just doing really basic stuff. So this one's going to seem a little bit weird to you, but eventually, as the semester goes along, you'll get the hang of it. So we'll double click here, and um, I want to go to the second form, right? So that form is called Form Two. So it's almost like you say, "Hey, here's my friend Form Two, but I want to call it like an alias. It's kind of a, a weird thing to think about, but I'm going to call this Form Two X." And I'm going to make a new version of it. So form 2 bracket bracket. Really weird coding. What we're doing here is kind of like uh, it's called uh, making an object. So right now you don't understand that. But just, you know, for the point right now, just follow that idea. So you've sort of made an, another copy of that form. And it's going to be called X. So from now on you don't talk about it as form 2. You call it X. And you want to show it off. So you actually say x dot show okay and it's gonna show up now watch I press run 
All right, this other stuff we're not going to test out again, but watch this. When you press this, there is form two. It doesn't have anything on it, but there it is. That's how you make another form pop up. Let's stop the program for a second. Let's go back into it. Let's have a way to get back from the other form back to this one or make the other one disappear. Because right now when you run it and you, you press it to say you want to go to it, there it is, but then you got to press like X or something to make it disappear. That's not a proper way to do things. You should have a nice button or something. So let's go to uh, form two. Let's add a nice little button. Okay, we'll call it the return button or something. So we'll call it btn return, right? And then down here, we'll put it like uh, the word uh, return. Okay, and it's just like one command. It's really simple. It's uh, this dot close bracket, all right? Now there are fancier ways to do this obviously, but for now, this is the simplest way to do it. So here is your main form. You press it, there it pops up, and then you press return, and it goes back to here. Now, if you see me always going over to the left, and it's not centered, you know, there's a way to fix that. Let's do it right now, actually. Uh, let's go to the, the first form. And one of the properties is, I think, something to do with, like, where it is on the screen. So you can tell the computer, listen, I want it to be in the middle. So see where it says start position here? And notice I'm on the form, so the little dots are around the corner of the form. So start position, what are the other choices? Center screen, perfect. That's what I want. Let's do the same thing for form two. And again, don't be on the button. You gotta be on the form. So the dots gotta be around the form. You press down here, center screen, beautiful. Now when we run it, it shows up right in the middle. Press that, it goes right on top of it, right in the middle, perfect. That's what you want. And you press return, it goes back and forth. Okay, so that is a quick, overview of three ideas. First, the idea of scroll bars. Second, the idea of menus. And then this idea of multiple forms. Now, if you get really good at this stuff, you can do some neat things. I just want to show you one uh, program that does that. And it's in your demos. I will go a little bit up just to show you an idea of how you do it. So see where it says user interface? Those are demos that are related to some of the stuff I showed today. I'm going to go into RGB colors, really cool program. Now remember, when you start using my examples here, some of them are probably done with an older version of C Sharp, and it works in this one, but they have to do this little conversion. So you just press next a couple of times. You give it a couple of seconds, and very quickly, you can press run. This is kind of a cool program. This is that slider stuff we just did, you know those horizontal and vertical sliders? when you get really good at computers then you can do some neat things like watch I'm going to slide the slider and the numbers are changing and I'm feeding this box the amount of color I want so this is I'm putting a lot of red in okay so see how it turns red now I'm adding a little bit of green so it's kind of changing and now I'm adding some blue and you can make most colors in the world from red green and blue and I made it kind of like purplish and you can go even darker these numbers go up to 255 Okay, so it's solid blue now. Give it a bit more red, and you're changing the colors as we do it. So it's kind of neat, eh? So you, once you get good at these, you can do all kinds of neat applications based on these basic ideas.